All right. Hi, this is John Linneval from John Linneval Tutoring, and this is AP U.S. History Video Lesson 1, Pre-Contact North America. Here's my contact information if you want to contact me, and please, if you like this video, do subscribe and do thumbs up, give it a like, and share it with anyone you can. Thanks. Note, this is not a substitute for your classes, text, etc. Please don't skip class. Don't ignore your teacher's class texts, hands out, <laughs> handouts, whatever, because while this is based on Barron's AP United States History Review Book, 4th edition, and Princeton Review's AP U.S. History 2019, as well as my general knowledge of U.S. history, things I've looked up on Wikipedia, etc., it's not a substitute for whatever your teacher is going to ask and wants to emphasize for his or her actual tests besides the AP U.S. History test. So please read your text and pay attention to what the teacher says in class. Now on with the show. The origin of Native Americans. Native Americans came to North America from Asia by crossing a land bridge across what is now the Bering Strait roughly 40,000 to 15,000 years ago. So sometime during that time, as the Ice Age ended, sea levels rose from the melting ice sheets covering that land bridge, thus creating the Bering Strait and making it impossible to walk across. Once across the strait into present-day Alaska, some settled there and they became the Inuit or the Eskimo. The Inuit people basically look like Asian people, like you see in this background picture here, because they essentially are. So let's move on. Native Americans roamed and adapted to various areas. Obviously, most people who crossed the Bering Strait didn't stay in Alaska, otherwise there would have been just very few Native Americans when Columbus landed, etc. So, but we can see here is the Bering Strait right about here. Here's where they would have crossed. Anyway, let's move on. So, some of them went down to the Pacific Northwest. Present day, Washington State, Oregon, British Columbia, etc. So, the Chinook tribe lived along the Columbia River and practiced hunting, fishing, and foraging, which is just another word for gathering. The Chinook salmon is named after that tribe. The Chinook mostly lived in settlements rather than wandering, that is, being nomadic. And they built things like this, like these totem poles, etc. The Chinook had a high level of economic advancement and social stratification. A strata is a layer, so they had different classes or layers of society. So those in the higher strata, such as shamans, religious officials, clergy, successful merchants and warriors, lived in relative isolation from those of the lower strata. Chinook commoners, that is those in the lower strata, lived in longhouses that held up to 50 people. So here's a nice example of a longhouse. Societies of the Pacific Northwest continued. Okay, we have totem poles. Now we've all heard expressions like the low man on the totem pole. That's the person who's on the bottom here. So, but what is a totem pole? Why did they bother making these things? Is it just because they look cool? Not quite. The University of British Columbia, that's in Canada, states totem poles are monuments created by First Nations, that's the Canadian term for Native American tribes, of the Pacific Northwest to represent and commemorate ancestry, history, people or events. Totem poles are typically created out of red cedar, a malleable word, malleable wood, I should say. So it's something that's easy to carve, it's easy to shape, relatively abundant in the Pacific Northwest, and would be erected to be visible within a community. Societies of the Pacific Northwest continued even further. Potlatch. Wikipedia says a potlatch is a gift-giving feast practiced by indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest coast of Canada and the United States, among whom it is traditionally the primary economic system. This includes the Haltsuk, Haida, Nuxak, Tlingit, Maka, Chimisan, Nucha Nolt, Kawakawa, I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation, sorry about that, and coast Shalish, Salish cultures. Sorry if I've offended anyone by mispronouncing those badly. Anyway, the word comes from the Chinook jargon, meaning to give away or a gift, originally from the new Chalmuk word palash, um, to make a ceremonial gift in a potlatch. So think of it as a way for the wealthy to demonstrate their power through generosity. Look what I can afford to give you. So here we go. Societies of the Southwest. So some of these people moved further south to the Southwest. 
And maize, called corn in the United States, cultivation, started in present-day Mexico, spreading into what is now the southwestern United States and most of the rest of present-day United States. Maize cultivation, what we normally call corn in the U.S., but in foreign countries they call it maize to distinguish it from other kinds of corn, because corn is just a generic English term meaning grain outside the U.S. Anyway, maize cultivation led to economic development among the native tribes. Societies of the Southwest continued. Pueblo. Pueblo was one of the major tribes of the Southwest, and they were named that by the Spanish since they lived in small towns, or pueblos in Spanish. Pueblo culture started to develop around 900 AD, or CE. CE stands for Common Era, basically means the same thing as AD without being a religious term, because AD is Anno Domini, or Year of Our Lord. In present day Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, early pueblos, also called Anasazi, came to depend on maize farming. So, maize farming allowed Pueblo slash Anasazi to settle and create architecturally and culturally sophisticated settlements, basically small towns or pueblos. Some of these structures, such as those found in the Chaco Canyon of today's New Mexico, contained honey contained hundreds of rooms. Sorry, having a little trouble talking right now. Okay. Societies of the Southwest continued even further. Climate change, volcanic eruptions, and severe drought caused many Pueblos to disperse, leaving their buildings. Some joined the Hopi and Zuni in today's western New Mexico, with others joining communities in the Rio Grande Valley. This was called the Great Migration, which weakened the Pueblo settlements just before Europeans arrived. Societies of the Great Basin and Great Plains. The Shoshone, the Ute, the Paiute, those are tribes of the Great Plains slash Great Basin. The Great Basin is a 400,000 square mile, or approximately 1,036,000 square kilometer, area between the Rocky and Sierra Nevada mountains. It's very environmentally diverse, but lacks natural resources. Societies of the Great Basin and Great Plains continued. The temperatures rose about 5,000 years ago, and that dried the west out, made it a desert. So the climate led to a desert culture among the natives. Seasonable mobility would be basically that hunters and gatherers moved all year. They became basically desert nomads in the Americas, just like they have them in the Middle East. Desert tribes made baskets like this one you see here because they were nomadic and baskets are light. Tribes that were more settled made pottery because it's very durable and pottery is heavy. So if you were walking all over the place, you probably weren't going to carry around a lot of pottery. And if you were staying in one place, you probably wanted something that was a little more substantial than a basket. Societies of the Great Basin and Great Plains. The Great Plains are a huge area of the U.S. and Canada that extends from the Mississippi to the Rocky Mountains. Plains Indians, like this guy in the background, are the stereotypical feathered headdresses wearing, horse riding, buffalo hunting Indians shown in countless artworks, like cheesy paintings that you might see in a cheap motel room or you know, that you can buy at certain stores and things like that. Anyway, those are the ones that you see in the artworks commemorating uh, Indian and you know, Native American culture. And it's really untrue for most Native Americans, even Plains Indians. Most of them did not look like this guy. Societies of the Great Plains continued even further. Plains Indians did hunt buffalo, but did it mostly on foot. One reason is that horses, while originating in North America, were extinct in North America until reintroduced by the Spanish. And the buffalo hunting tribes, the Sioux, the Blackfoot, the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Those were the buffalo hunting tribes. There were other Great Plains tribes that were sedentary and agrarian, meaning they grew agricultural things. They grew plants, crops. The Omaha, the Osage, and the Wichita. So notice those are names of cities in the Midwest. Like Omaha, Nebraska, okay. Osage County, Wichita, okay. Societies of the East. The Algonquian peoples, the Algonquian language group, lived in what is now the U.S. East Coast and the Great Lakes, St. Lawrence River regions. Think New York State. Atlantic Coast Algonquians hunted, fished, and farmed maize. Northeastern Algonquians, um, those who lived in present-day New England, didn't farm because it was too cold, so they hunted and fished. And they also lived in their long houses that you can see in the background picture here. 
the Iroquois Great League of Peace, another society of the East, in what is now New York State, groups of Iroquoian speaking peoples formed a confederation, the Iroquois Confederacy. Those tribes were the Mohawks or the Mohicans. You've heard of the last of the Mohicans. You've heard of the punk rock hairstyle, the Mohawk. That's where they got it from. Um, the Oneidas, the Cayugas, the Senecas. They are believed to date back to at least the 15th century AD or CE, also known as Horenosane, which are the people of the Longhouse. That was also my Order of the Arrow. They were called the Haudenosaunee because I'm originally from Western New York. So when I was in the Boy Scouts, that was our Order of the Arrow unit's name. Anyway, you can look this up on Wikipedia. Just go to the entry for Iroquois. The League was formed to prevent infighting and it created a powerful political force. Um, for example, it could resist attacks from outsiders, including Europeans after contact. Could also be other native tribes that maybe weren't so friendly to the Iroquois. They would have to deal with, you know, basically four tribes instead of one. If you want to contact me, you can contact me on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Tutoring. You can contact me on Instagram at www.instagram.com John Linnaball Tutoring, John dot Linnaball dot Tutoring. You can call me or text me at 415-623-4251. You can email me at John at John Linnaball.com. And you can find me at my website, www.John Linnaball or www.John Linnaball Tutoring.com. All one word, doesn't matter. They take you to the same site. And testpreparation.locals.com is my locals.com site. I'm still in the midst of putting things up on there. There's a few technical things that I have to get around, such as a half hour limitation on videos. So a video such as this one, I might have to split in half just so it will actually fit on there and I won't exceed any limits. And if you want to send me postal mail, you can mail John Linnaball Tutoring at 1859 Powell Street, number 109, San Francisco, California, 94133. Did you find this video useful? Please like it and subscribe to my channel. Neither one costs you anything. You'll be alerted about my new videos. Why do I care? Well, it's simple. YouTube doesn't let me share any ad revenue unless I have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours. That's 240,000 minutes of view time in a year. While many people are watching these, I don't have 4,000 hours of watch time in the last year. I also still don't have 1,000 subscribers at this time, although I'm getting close. For the same reasons, you are not only welcome, but encouraged to share links to this video, put it in playlists, etc. I'm always happy to read and respond to constructive criticism or suggestions for new videos. I'd appreciate your input. I reserve the right to delete comments from and block those who specialize in destructive criticism, you know, trolls, or pe things that are off topic, you know, things that are posted by spammers and disturbed people. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day.